Hi everyone, I'm so glad to see you back in this channel, Online Classroom Jegutio. In this video, Jegutio is going to talk about buoyant force. So, in our first video in Chapter Eight, we talked very briefly about buoyant force when we discuss about different types of force. If you can remember, buoyant force is the force that is causing an object to float. An object will float if the buoyant force acting on it is enough to support the weight, the weight of the object, which means the buoyant force is at least equal to the weight of the object. Let's look at it through some examples to help you to understand. In this example one, you can see this rubber duct. Let's say the rubber duct has the weight of 10 newtons, and the buoyant force acting on it is also 10 newtons. That means the buoyant force is enough to support the weight of the duct, and hence the rubber duct will float. How about this example two of this stone? Clearly, this stone is submerged in water. The weight of the stone, say, is about 10 newton, and the buoyant force acting on it is 5 newton. So 5 newton of buoyant force is not enough to support the weight of 10 newton. So the stone will submerge. Let's look at how we can calculate buoyant force. You cannot measure buoyant force. It is an effect, and hence we need to calculate it. How do we calculate it? We can measure actual weight and apparent weight. So we take the actual weight and minus the apparent weight. You might be asking, Jekutio, what is actual weight and what is apparent weight? So actual weight is the weight of an object that you measure when that object is in the air. And the apparent weight of the object is the weight of that object when you measure it in fluid. For example, in this picture, you are measuring the weight of glass bottle lid on air and also in the liquid. And remember this little equipment here, what do you call this? It is spring balance. We use spring balance to measure weight. So if the glass bottle lid is hanging up in the air, this will be the actual weight. Say the actual weight of this bottle lid is 6 newtons. And when you immerse this glass bottle lid in water and measure the weight again, it is obviously, obviously gonna be a little bit less because the water in the speaker is already helping to support the weight. And that is 5 newton. By the way, the force that is supporting the, the, uh, the glass bottle lid in the water is called the buoyant force. So how do we measure that? So buoyant force equal to the actual weight minus the apparent weight. So you have 6 newton minus 5 newton and your answer will be 1 newton. The buoyant force in this case is 1 newton. And I want you to remember, every time you make a calculation like that in your exam, remember to check your answer that you have written down the correct unit. So in this case, the unit for force is newton, a capital letter N. Next, let us look at density and buoyant effect. I'm sure all of you, when you look at the, the floating and the sinking of an object, okay, whether an object will float or it will submerge, immediately you will connect it with density. We have talked about density in Form 1. So what is this buoyant effect? Does it have to do with density? Yes, they are interrelated, they complement each other and they do not conflict. Let me show you. Let's say this object on, the, uh, on this diagram is less dense than liquid and the buoyant force is more than the weight of the object and hence the object will float so they do not conflict each other. And in terms of density, if the object is submerged at the bottom of the liquid, that means the object is more dense than liquid. But if we look at buoyant effect, that means the buoyant force is less than the weight of the object. The buoyant force is not enough to support the weight and hence the object will submerge to the bottom of the liquid. So they do not conflict each other. So how can we use this density and buoyant effect in our daily life? This is especially important to the cargo ships. If you notice, in every cargo ship, they are marked by these lines. 
What are these lines? They are called the plimzo lines. These plimzo lines are very important to the sailor. Why? Because the different parts of the world, their sea water has very different temperature and concentration of salt. This means the density of seawater is also different, and to what extent the cargo ship will float will be different too. So the plimzo lines will help the sailor to determine whether the ship is safe to stay afloat at certain part of the world. That's all from Tekutio in this video about buoyant force. If you ever have any question about this topic, please do not hesitate to type them out in the comment section. If you need all these slides as your notes, feel free to download it in the description section as well. I will attach a link where you can do so. So till then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye! If you have learned something new from this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.